for bringing the revolutionary movement known as Take It Back to the heart of London. This is uh, an opportunity to introduce to you uh, the real independence for Nigeria from 2019. I am uh, thrilled to be here. Because we are doing this today, something happened yesterday. Our outgoing president, who had been in the UK, had to flee the UK. The truth is that he bombed his around. He sent one to him. He sent one to him yesterday. He sent one to him yesterday that you should attend this town hall meeting. So that you can come and learn how governance will be after he's kicked out of office next year. Uh, I also want to announce to you that next year's election, the presidential election, will be holding on February 16, 2019. That particular day is my birthday.
After children came okay, and badger, the butchers were back to fight. So Nigeria should have died. After him came Abdul Salam. He stole as much as he could. He's still there. After him came the Oluwemu of Asanjo, who used to be the military head of state. He must spend eight years in power. After he ruined the Nigerian economy, ruined his politics, he asked to be allowed to stay forever. He was defeated. And after him came Yara who he knew was sick. But he forced him upon Nigeria. And he died. But he died for something unthinkable happened in Nigeria. <coughs> for five months, Nigeria was governed by a dead man. <coughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yes. had been raised dead for five months before he was pronounced dead in Abuja. Uh, inside the Asurok place. Because our leaders are wicked. Yeah. The military guys at that time led by the man who is now Minister for Internal Affairs, Dambazo, mm -hmm. smuggled him. He smuggled a dead man into the presidential villa. And they started arranging visits to this dead man. They took pastors there, imams there, mm -hmm. to come and testify to newspaper reporters were reporting that the man was studying the constitution again and just about to resume office. And at the point, they started claiming that he was playing with his grandchildren. Yeah. At the point they said they saw him climbing the stairs up and down. And my poor home minister in those days, and that was Dora Akriu, he played. And I said, true, she played. I said, uh, Dr. Akriu, is it true that the president is climbing stairs? Well, he said, sure, how you know they are lying is that even when he was not sick, nobody can climb the Nigerian political government. Exercise. <laughs> but I'm giving you this history so that you can recognize where we are headed. And after you came, somebody that we all hope and thought that could help us. Because before then, we had always said that maybe we had a well educated president, he would do us right. Came to Doctor Rudolph Jonathan, PhD with notices. <laughs> <laughs> not a okay. He conquered the treasury and he was moving money out of Nigeria as if money was going out of circulation, including moving it to London here, where the criminals helped them. Yeah. Then for that long died to buy that part of money to buy. And our brother Bill, uh, somebody introduced me as coming from the southwest. Yes, the school I come from the southwest, actually, I'm from the Niger Delta region. Yay! Woo! I don't like to play the ethnic game because ethnicity has also failed us. Yes. But geographically, I'm actually from the Niger Delta region. Uh, we'll talk about that at another symposium in the future. After our brother came, another former military general, the fundamental error, because we were looking for integrity in the country. And because the man who had a PhD had failed us so bad, we forgot to ask for the YX certificate. <laughs> and we just said, if it's a NEPA bill, uh, we would accept. Forgetting that the man also hasn't paid his NEPA bill for a long time, because there's no light in this part of the war. That's true. They were powering their houses with what they call, I better pass my neighbor generation. <laughs> and he came because they had a generation who now has zilch generation. He told us he would declare his assets, no asset declaration has been made officially. So they just told us, I think I have some houses there. 150 cows that never in never have twins, they never have a good place. It's always 150 cows. And he surrounded himself with even better teams than the former PhD holder. Yeah, they started playing games with our treasure and also playing games with our minds. 
But we have reached a point now that nobody can fool us anymore. Yes. Yes. Nobody can come with a fake integrity yes. and fool us. Yes. And nobody can come with another what we call magumago in Nigeria yes. and claim that they are forming another political alliance. Never they now want us to follow them. So it's not happening anymore. Whether it is the third force or the spent force, <laughs> all the forces are going to be retired permanently <laughs> in 2019. That's right. Yes. Usher in a new era. Yes. 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 yes.
how to move the people from analog era into a digital phone. And those of analog who saw me in Nigeria, one of my best moments when I was in Nigeria was on the radio show with Minister from the oh, yeah. And I see that is not bad enough. 
when we should demonstrate a little bit of integrity and let Nigeria be, is presenting himself again yeah. to become Nigeria's president. Yes. Yes. As if Nigeria yeah. is not a low state high school where when you fail, you have to repeat the same class. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing will let us find ourselves that we are going to the second time. Nigeria must reject him yeah. and the 20 million votes that they claim he usually gets, we have done the dissection of it, there's nothing left in there anymore. Because this time around, Karaba is not voting for him. Natu yes. is not voting for him. Yes. Benway is not voting for him. Yes. Half, half of Kaduna is not voting for him. Yes. Civil servants are not voting for him. Yes. Southwest is not voting for him. Yes. South yes. South is not voting for him. Yes. Yes. And the South is definitely not <laughs>
and we take it back. We take it back. Take it back. So, I have been told that I have to make this interact. So, the more I talk, the less opportunity you have to ask me questions. But you know, you have to. We have to be grateful to ourselves that we can interact. Yes, sir. Our politicians are not campaigning right now. Because there's nothing to campaign on. We are fighting like this. We can be that all of them are going to be starting to be safe. What will be the basis for campaigning for second time? And I'm not campaigning. Or what will Atiku want to campaign on? Is it what will this universal job? Or the fact that we still have to get him a visa to enter the US if he wins. We have to beg the United Nations to let him come to the United Nations because he cannot enter America proper based on his past. I mean, what are the others going to be campaigning on? And people have asked me, are you collaborating with other young people? Yes. Of course, we welcome their coming out. But they should also sell their ideas yeah. to everybody. Yeah. They must be willing to go to every part of Nigeria. I've seen some of them, very eloquent, great ones, but they are refused to live in Koyi and Victoria Island. Nigeria is not in Koyi and Victoria Island. And I worry about some of them. Nigeria is a tough place. Yeah. If they are not prepared, <laughs> they will rob handle you and you will run away. But some of us, yes, Corrupt 
leaders that we have over the country, and we must end their reign next year. Amen. Amen. Before we do the Kiva I don't want to leave you without telling you what we do for Nigeria around. And we have a 10 point agenda that we have a very general response to my side. It's because we must bring the heat of our innovative ideas to Nigeria. And we are spicing it up. Our first priority is security. Second, and also first, access to power. Structure. I do support the structure 
What I don't support are the people who are advocating for instruction. The voice of young people in diaspora are not on the table where they are discussing restructuring right now. You cannot be deciding for me how to restructure my future when I'm absent from there. You cannot call somebody's hair, according to Abiola, if he's not sitting on the barber's chair. That is what the restructuring conversation is about now. It's driven by the same 80-something-year-old people. If you say Buhari is too old to rule Nigeria, Edwin Clark is also too old to restructure Nigeria for me. About your Adeban job, with due respect, is too old to restructure Nigeria for me. Odufalai is too old to restructure Nigeria for me. Certainly, Femi Fanika Odi is too unstable to restructure Nigeria for me. That's my argument over restructuring. Otherwise, all the beautiful things that come with it, the evolution of power, State police. I support that in the US, every town, county, it's got their own police. So I cannot be against state police. But we must discuss how economically we also empower the state to pay the police spend. Because God knows now that I'm not paying workers. If they have state police, you know how dangerous a police officer can be, even when they are paid. Imagine what it would be if they are not paid, they are not necessary. It would be complete chaos and armed robbery happening right in front of us because now they have weapons. So, we do restructuring with not Spicer now, and a huge part of it is health. Health is key. We're discussing health here. And I thank you guys. This is why I think we hit the ground running. Because some of the most competent Nigerians within the health sector here and elsewhere. Education. Big deal for us. We cannot move it, we can't move this country forward without investing deliberately in the education of our kids. And we must provide free and qualitative education. And we must bring technology to bear on our education system. I went to Ondo State, my hometown, during the 23 day street. The same chair I sat on in 1980, I entered secondary school in 1980. Is still there. The window they call louvers is still the one. Half of them blown up. It's still there. It is not that somebody made it up. There's no way you can keep producing people under those educational conditions. I expect that you find the right workforce to power the future of Nigeria. That's why the rate you must invest the Agriculture. Big thing, they only cultivating 70% of our land because they are a rent economy collecting rent from oil. And oil is about to become a state. It's a lazy economy, we can't rely on that. But we are not practicing agriculture the same way they practice now. Agriculture by propaganda. When the Minister of Agriculture will say that there are some rice mills that are closing down in Malaysia, and there are no rice mills in Nigeria popping up. You know, you can't, you, you know, it's not even logical, it's idiotic to say that until I think the Malaysian people have had come out and said the man was planning. You did that research. Imports from Malaysia to Singapore of rice has actually increased in the last two years. Because what the reason is that they are coming to the New Republic into Nigeria. But they're lying to you that, you know, rice is in abundance. You can't even trust the rice that they are packaging and calling red like red rice. It would have been small good rice. These guys don't want So Nigeria should be able to not only feed itself, Nigeria should be able to be self-sufficient enough to feed almost the rest of Africa. That is what we bring to bear our culture, the full technological powerhouse. And that will partially address the issue of even head smell. Because we can ranch those cows. And if you ranch cows, you have the possibility of generating biogas from the ranches. Yeah. And by extension, electricity and fertilizers. But this guy, the analog, the analog, the know that these things are possible. When we talk about electricity, we talk about mix. We are the only people in the market, in the political market today, who are planning to generate 4,500 megawatts of electricity through renewable energy, solar. Northern Nigeria is 24 hours sunshine. And we leave it for Boko Haram. By the time we do 4,500 megawatts of electricity, 
Boko Haram will run out of soldiers. Now they want to walk. But that doesn't mean that we will not have to fix our ministries. Because right now we are the ones from this Boko Haram. Last year we gave Boko Haram 5 million euros through ransom payments. That is what Buhari came to do. Which was contrary to what he promised he would do when he came to power. And tourism is going to be a big deal for us. When you talk about tourism, it's not to go and see a little more rock alone. Uh, there are actually no roads now to go from Lagos to Abeokuta. That's why infrastructure is important, so that people can start going to those places. But we have a lot more that we bury in other tourism. Look at the entertainment. Nigeria is entertaining the world as we speak. I got a taxi cab yesterday in London. I had to ask the Indian guy, can you find me a station that plays Nigerian music? It didn't take him five seconds to find it. Because our guys are very good in the entertainment sector. They are doing well in sports, which we bear under tourism too. Our guys are playing very well, and as you know, we are the biggest adopters of international teams that are playing around us. So we love sports, but we don't have stadia in the country. So that those things have to be improved. Finally, we've also got a very powerful cultural tool in our hands. The movies that we are making now in Nigeria. It's been watched all over the world. But we are not investing appropriately today. We are not domesticating what these innovative people are doing with people. It's not part of our university education. It's not part of our investment portfolio. And all of that must change come next year. Uh, I just have to think with you that we are just a few months away from independence. We are two months between us and two figures in Nigeria. And it's not about me alone. It's about every single one of you in this room who has bought into the dream. If you had this meeting with this number of Nigerians anywhere in Nigeria, it costs nothing less than 50 million naira. Because they have to pay everybody who is coming to sit down. Even in London. They did it. I heard that people came here yes. and did a town hall meeting. People were paid. Still, they didn't show up. <laughs> Buhari had to pay people to do a support rally for him the other day. Still, a lot of people did not show up. But you have come here today on your own volition. From there, you come here.
Let's take it. We are going to be there, all of us together. Yeah.